Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 47. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Business 210, Chapter 3. If you're in the class, just go to our Chapter 3 website. Hey, we got to talk about the empirical rule. This is just on the heels of talking about Chebyshev's theorem and Z. As we just uh, talked about in the last couple of videos, Z is a standardized value that tells us how many standard deviations above or below the mean we are. Now, there's a great rule when you have a bell-shaped distribution. And as we learn later in Chapter 6 moving forward, we are going to be able to use the bell-shaped distribution in many cases. Ah, but not all cases. Sometimes people try to fit uh, everything or too much into a bell-shaped curve. If you remember the financial crisis uh, in 08, 09, started in July 2007, you know that a lot of the cause, a lot of the, the trouble from the financial markets was because models that people had developed based on bell-shaped distributions were not really what was happening in the financial markets. Ah, but there will be lots of situations where uh, we have bell-shaped distributions. Now, here's the empirical rule. Uh, these 68.2% of the values will lie between plus or minus one standard deviation, 94.5, between plus or minus two and 99.72. Now, usually if you see an abbreviated, you'll see 68, 95, and 99. Or, in this case, I'll say almost all values lie within plus or minus uh, three standard deviations. By the way, when we do outliers, that's where the three will come from, plus or minus three standard deviations. Now, I'm going to scroll up here. Uh, picture often helps a lot. Chapter 6, we'll start to see this a lot more. Um, continuous uh, probability distribution, sometimes called normal. But we'll just think of it as a bell right now. And visually, between there's a, a dividing mark here. This is a symmetrical uh, curve right down the middle. Everything on this side is exactly the same as that side. Ah, but between uh, minus 1 standard deviation and plus 1 standard deviation, 68% of the value. So plus or minus one standard deviation, 68% of the values. Between this green line here and here, everything in between there would be 95. This would be minus two standard deviations. This would be plus two standard deviations, with the mean being right there. And three, all the way from there, all the way out to there. 99% uh, of the values lie within plus or minus three standard deviations. All area under the curve, of course, is 100%. Right here, as we talked about with skew, mean equals median equals mode, and the curve is symmetric. Uh, let's look at a slightly different um, example. They don't talk about this until chapter 6, but I might as well uh, just show, give you a hint. Because we're talking about Bell distributions, right? But they're not all exactly the same shape, uh, size, um, but they have the same Bell shape. So size, let's go over to this tab right here. And I just have a little chart here. If you click on this arrow, standard deviation, you see I'm changing the standard deviation. It's changing the chart. So you can see they're all slightly different sizes, but they all have the, the same basic bell shape. right? If I increase it, uh, the basic bell shape is still there, but there's all sorts of different sizes. If you change the mean, it looks like it's not changeable. The standard deviation uh, is 4.3. As I change this, you can see the axis, uh, horizontal axis changing there. So that's just a hint of the future. There's lots of um, nor a standard nor oh no. There's lots of bell-shaped curves. That's all we're learning in this chapter. Later, we'll see it's called normal, and uh, we'll see that there's a standardized normal. But lots of different bells, shapes, even though the sizes may uh, be a little bit different. Now, let's go look at an example of applying this. Here's our rule, uh, 68, 95, 95. I'm just using those as approximates here. There's a little picture, because a picture tells a 1,000 words sometimes. Uh, right down the middle, symmetrical on either side. Now, here's our uh, distribution, bell-shaped. Here's our mean of 83 uh, for a test score, and our standard deviation is 5. So the question is, what lower and upper value will give 
can we use to then make a statement that will say 60% of the scores lie between those two values? Well, we simply, for the 68, it's one standard deviation, plus or minus. So we can simply uh, click here and say equals. I'm going to click on the mean, and this is the lower, so I have to subtract just one standard deviation. And then Enter. So 78. And then above, 83 plus one standard deviation, and we get 88. With those two values, just from our, 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 our rule, we can say, because it's bell-shaped, approximately 68% lie between 78 and 88. Now, uh, this is a class. Um, we have lots of tests and whatnot and quizzes and whatnot. And, uh, you know, just a quick rule of, of thumb, you know, even though the distribution may have some other shape, just a quick rule of thumb, you know, just eyeing it, you could immediately say, okay, because you could add this in your head, 78 to 88 is the score where, you know, approximately 68% uh, will lie. But again, that's just an approximation because everything does not fit into a bell-shaped distribution. It actually grades a lot of times don't. In fact, sometimes they're bimodal. Uh, we looked at some examples earlier uh, for, for test scores. Now, uh, let's how about 95%. Well, we're going to do the same thing, except for now we're adding what? Two, or adding and subtracting two standard deviations. So our test score is going to be 83. Let's see if I can get it there. Minus sigma 5, which is our standard deviation, times 2. So 73 is the low end, and then the upper end would be this times this. Oops, I'm not times. Ooh, that would be terrible. Minus our standard deviation, but how many standard deviations? Times 2. So for a bell-shaped curve, approximately 95% lie bel uh, between 73 and 73. Oh, look what I did here. I must be asleep at the wheel. Oh, so there we go. Approximately 95% of the 90% 95% lie between 73 and 93. Now, how about this one? What percent of the values lie below a score of 83? Well, wait a second. I thought this was about between, but oh yeah, below. Let's just go up here and look. There's 83, right? Visually, zoop, right down the middle, it's a symmetric curve. So because it is. Uh, symmetric on both sides, we know everything underneath is 100%. So divided down the middle, since it's symmetric, 50% there, 50% there. Oh yeah, that's the mean right down the middle. So what percent of the values lie below a score? It would have to be 50%. Approximately 50% lie below. And how about uh, above? Well, the same thing. I'm going to put 0.5 here. This is the formatted percent. Uh, representation of this number, 0.5. So approximately 50% lie above 83. Now, uh, let's just, um, we mentioned this back in SKU. Remember, this is frequency and these are uh, classes. Now, these were our, this is our histogram, and these were groups uh, that we did. But the, the kind of shape is the same. But notice, frequency was here. That was count, right? So we got a number here. However tall this was was a number. But if you remember from chapter 2, we could also do relative frequency and get the exact same chart. But it wouldn't be a count on this axis. It would be a relative frequency, a number between 0 and 1. So when you see these, uh, this uh, bell-shaped distribution here and here. This is always going to be re this is relative relative frequency. So there's some uh, percentage or proportion associated with any point here. So the axis here is relative, and then of course this for us right now is uh, standard deviations above or below. Or later we'll see that that is those are our values, our particular values. All right, so that's a little bit about the bell. Let's go and expand on this a little bit further. <clears throat> okay, again, I have this picture here because a picture tells a thousand words. And we're going to need this picture here to remind us that both sides are symmetrical. Uh, and there's our uh, 
empirical rule or bell-shaped rule or standard normal uh, uh, rule. Uh, so here's our example. Retail price per gallon. Uh, I can't spell. Retail price per gallon distribution is bell-shaped. So that is our assumption here. Mean regular gas per gallon is 260 and the uh, standard deviation is 0.15. Retail price per gallon distribution is bell-shaped. The mean regular gas per gallon is 260 and the standard deviation is 15 cents. So we want to um, do some calculations here. Now let's imagine that we have $2.45 and $2.75. So we have these two values and we want to figure out the proportion or the percentage of values that would lie between these two given that it's a bell-shaped distribution. Well the first thing is we've got to calculate our standard D, our, uh, Z score. I'm going to click in the cell equals open parentheses we will take our particular value minus our mean and I'm going to hit uh, F4. That right there is the deviation, right? We can already see that we're below, we're below that divided by our standard deviation and I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock that. So I hit control enter and I can already see that's formatting uh, uh, control one. I'm going to go to number I'm going to click on currency and then maybe change it to that. You don't have to do that but that uh, parentheses comes from accounting. Uh, okay so we're mine oh yeah control one. I meant to go here general I'm asleep today shooting these videos. Minus one. That means what? How many standard deviations below? Minus one. Now I'm going to copy this, control C, and paste it right here. Control V. Why? Because that was a relative cell reference looking one to my left and I properly locked those. So we're uh, one below and one above with this. So what is uh, the total percentage? Well we know that a plus or minus our rule is 68 so we can just type here 0.68 and then the meaning you say approximately 68 percent of the values lie between two dollars and 45 cents and 275. Now let's do a little bit harder one. Uh, we'll do our same formula here and guess what that formula will work here too so I'm going to copy and paste. Oh look at that one. This one is two below, two standard deviations below. And then I'm going to copy this again and I can use that same formula here, control V. Notice because I locked those ones and this one was always looking one to my left. That works just fine. Oh, well, so wait a second. We get two below and one above. How, how are we going to calculate that? I don't, I don't see anything here that says uh, minus two below and one above. Ah, but because it's symmetrical, this right here, we can do a little uh, calculation. So I'm going to scroll down here. Uh, and we can calculate half the area, right? So that line there, which was uh, clumsily drawn right there, all the way to the purple, that would be half of 68. This line here, all the way to the end of this green, would be half of 95. So let's calculate our half areas. So I'm going to highlight all of the cells equals one cell to my left divided by two. Control enter to populate all those cells. So there we go. That'll help us. If we're minus two below, right? Half, half of this. Let's see if I can scroll this up here. All the way to here would be half. So that's four, 0.475. And one above would be from here to the purple. That would be half of that. So it would be 0.34. Remember, we can get away with this because it's symmetrical. So I simply have to add this plus this. And that gives me for this particular example, our proportion, or if we formatted it, percent, 0.815. So approximately 81.5% of the values lie between $2.30 and 275. Finally, uh, this one, we want to ask the question above. What uh, proportion of the values are above $2.75? Well, let's go back up here. 275 would be uh, we can calculate it here. I'm just going to copy 
and paste. Oh, one standard deviation above. So that's 68. But we don't have a rule here that just says above, right? Yes, but we can use uh, t two aspects. One is that it's symmetrical, right? What does that mean? Well, right back over here, remember, we did our little test. Oh, there's 50% above, 50% or below and above. And uh, 0.5 is the number associated with that. So look at this. All the area under the curve is 100%. Line down the middle symmetrical means 50% on this side, 50% on this side. Well, look, if 275 is one standard deviation, we already know from here to here, that's what? 0.34. So if we take the whole area, 0.5 minus 0.34, that'll give us from here up. So from here up is what we're asking. So I'm going to say equals 0.5 minus this value right here. There are approximately 60% of the values are above 275. Now, think about this. We have done a lot so far here. We're talking about proportions, the empirical rule. Uh, but it's all based on what? A typical value and a measure of our variation, standard deviations. We got our z, which was very convenient because it gave us a uh, number of standard deviations, either above or below the mean. We had this bell-shaped distribution. We remember from skew that mean, that, that would mean meaning mode are, are right here in the middle. But we use the mean here. And with our normal rule and a little uh, calculating, we came up with some good statements about our particular values, proportions of values that lie between two bookend values. So uh, we will. All right, see you next video.